جميعاً صراحة إحنا بلشنا بالمحاضرة الماضية حكينا عن section 4.8 we're discussing further simplification for force and couple system حكينا عن several situations and in such situations in order to be able to further to 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 simplify force and couple system more or further we said that we have there or at least one or one condition should be satisfied which is that resultant force and the resultant moment should be perpendicular so if that condition was satisfied then we could actually uh, simplify the force and couple system further we discussed several points in the previous lecture and today uh, i will talk about uh, i'll give an example regarding uh, the parallel force system so the parallel force systems here parallel force system it says that if we have forces or parallel forces acting on a plane for example x z plane then these forces can be substituted by a single force somewhere for example around point o so they can be substituted by a single force and definitely a couple moment now so this is the situation so these two systems now are equivalent then we said that we could actually move this force somewhere along for instance the b axis to point P for example so move it to point P for example and then you have to find the perpendicular distance or the distance from point O now uh, we will be uh, going through a problem in the book it's problem 4 1 2 4 we will solve it together so this is this is the problem so the problem asks for the following it says that replace the parallel force system acting on the plate by a resultant force and specify its location on the x z plane so here these are our coordinates z x and y and there's a plate on which three forces are acting the distances are all given so what we need to do now is basically substitute all these forces by a single force and then we have to decide or determine its position on the xz plane so basically what we need are x and z coordinates so the situation goes like this first we have to say that the resultant moment for instance we take first oh okay before that before that I'm really sorry so uh, before that we have actually to find the uh, uh, the resultant force so basically FR now what you need to do is just sum up all these forces right so the summation of forces in that direction which is actually in the y direction so as you can see these forces are going in the negative y direction so it would be like minus 2 kilonewtons minus 5 and minus 3 so this is minus 2 minus 5 minus 3 and this is minus 10 kilonewtons or you could say this is 10 kilonewtons in the negative y direction now since you came up with your force let's assume that your force is somewhere here I don't know where, where, where it could be but for instance let's say that it's acting here so this is our force this is 10 kilonewton this is the resultant force now we have to find the x and the z coordinates from for instance the point O which is the origin this let's call this one point O so now in order to do that we need to use the moment equations which is as you remember we said that from the principle of moment this moment the moment of this force around point O equals to the summation of the components of the other forces or the components of the uh, of the resultant force or the components for, for for the forces so now it's easy we have to do the following first we have to find the moment around the x-axis caused by these forces and the moment around the z-axis also caused by these forces and then we can find actually the distance as we discussed earlier 
we actually say that for instance the resultant moment around the x-axis uh, should be equal to the summation of moments of all the forces now resultant moment comes basically from the resultant force so this is fr multiplied by d d in the x direction right now if we are looking about d or actually this should be the perpendicular distance for the moments around the x-axis so this is actually the d in the z direction right now again if we were to find for example the moment for this five kilonewtons around the x-axis around the x-axis so we need the perpendicular distance to the x-axis so this perpendicular distance should be on the z-axis right so d on the z-axis now should equal to the summation of moments for all these forces now let's work with the first one this is two kilonewtons now around the x-axis or about the x-axis you can see that this causes a counterclockwise rotation counterclockwise rotation so if it causes counterclockwise rotation around the x-axis or about the x-axis then the value for this moment should be positive so this is plus two kilonewtons multiplied by the perpendicular distance the perpendicular distance to the, to the x-axis which is 1 plus 1 plus 0 0.5 so this is 2.5 right 2 multiplied by 2.5 plus again also the 5 kN force would cause a counterclockwise rotation so counterclockwise as we know is positive so plus 5 multiplied by the distance this perpendicular distance is 1.5 meters now the last one is this plus 3 kilonewtons multiplied by the perpendicular distance similarly counterclockwise rotation so multiplied by the 0 0.5 so this equals to fr multiplied by dz now resultant force this is 10 kilonewtons it goes counterclockwise so it should be 10 by d uh, multiplied by dz equals to the summation of these forces 2 multiplied by 2.5 this is 5 plus 5 multiplied by 1.5 this is 7.5 plus 1.5 so this is 9 14 and this is 10 dz so we get or dz as 14 over 10 and this is 1.4 meters this is the z coordinate similarly now we need to find the uh, resultant moment around the z axis so say that moment resultant about z axis is also equal to the summation of moments around that point or that axis so this is fr multiplied by d x right it should be the perpendicular distance is equal to the summation of moment for all, the, all these forces now for instance let's start with the two kilonewton if we are going around the z axis in this direction now try to put your finger in this your, your fingers in this direction and your uh, the palm of your hand facing the z axis so if you go around the z axis you would see that your thumb goes downwards so this causes a clockwise rotation clockwise rotation or if if you use your thumb then your thumb is going downwards again put your fingers in the direction of the two kilonewton force while your palm is actually facing the z-axis you would see that you're going in this direction your fingers are going in this direction which means that they are going clockwise or your thumb is going downwards in the negative z so this should give us a negative uh, uh, should give us a negative uh, moment so this is minus two kilonewtons multiplied by the perpendicular distance which would be the distance on the x-axis which is 1.5 plus similarly for the five kilonewtons five multiplied by 0 0.5 plus three multiplied by the same distance which is 1.5 
this should equal to fr multiplied by z so if r was here for instance so this goes also in the same direction clockwise so i mean oh these are all of them negatives negative so this is minus 10 kilonewtons multiplied by d or the the x component of the distance so this is minus 2 multiplied by 1.5 this is minus 3 minus 2.5 minus 4.5 so this is minus 10 so from here we get dx as 1 meters so now our force uh, is placed should be placed here at the x distance is 1 so this is 1 the x 1 meters and this is and this is 1 in the z uh, or oh, sorry 1.4 on the z axis so 1 and 1.4 so this is actually our uh, location for force so uh, force r equals uh, 10 or minus 10 kilonewtons right at 1 in the x and 1.4 in the z so this is x and this is z there's no y component that we know for a fact already because we work we are working on the uh, x z plane okay that's it. Thank you for watching.